Hey everybody, welcome to That Dang Dad. My name is Phil and I'm coming to you live with a rare field recording from deep in the Big Apple, the Windy City. That's right, Boston, Massachusetts, where I'm attending the Inbound Digital Marketing Conference. And I've got something pretty important to talk about. So anyway, it's the uh, kind of inaugural night of Inbound, and after a little uh, cocktail get-together, I'm back in my hotel room by myself. Um, and uh, anyway, that would explain why the audio is not as clear as it normally is. I don't have my normal uh, good mic set up since I'm traveling, so we'll just have to make do. But uh, this is kind of an important issue that I wanted to talk about, and it's important because it concerns something that's been in the news lately, depending on kind of what circles you uh, run in. And uh, I don't have like a really developed script for this, so if I'm a little rambly, uh, bear with me. I'm trying to kind of shoot from the hip here. And uh, actually, I'm trying to shoot from the heart here. So uh, uh, that's not too traumatic. Anyway, um, so I'm at a conference, a marketing conference. And uh, it's a big conference. There's you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people here. And uh, it got me thinking about an issue that's uh, been going around in the last couple of weeks. You may have heard that uh, Alec Holovka, Holovka, I don't know how you say it, Holovka, uh, a, a, a composer for uh, one of my favorite video games of all time, Night in the Woods, uh, was recently outed as a sex pest. Uh, a creep who kind of abused people and was manipulative and um, assaultive and predatory and all those things. Um, after allegations of that came out, he uh, took his own life. And um, so that's been sort of kind of the online discourse lately, is that kind of event. And after allegations came out about Alec, uh, other people in the games industry came out with their own stories of being abused and preyed upon by people in the games industry. And one of the ones that I read that really stuck out to me occurred at an industry event at a conference, like the conference that I'm at. And it occurred uh, in the presence of a ton of free alcohol, like the conference that I'm at. And uh, it really got me thinking about the sort of intersection between uh, industry events, alcohol, and predatory behavior, um, particularly by men who are in positions of power in the industry, like I am as a hiring manager. Um, so first thing I want to say first, I uh, am not here to tell you not to drink. Uh, I love drinking. In fact, I have my room wine right here. So, um, you know, this is in no way uh, anti-alcohol screed. And as somebody who enjoys partaking, um, I certainly hope it doesn't lead to any, uh, any uh, uh, prohibition behavior on the part of future uh, events that I attend. Alright, there was a weird high pitched noise in my room. Let's try this outside, maybe. Audio might be better. I don't know what's going on. This field recordings suck. Alright, uh, back in my room again. Let's try it again and hopefully that uh, noise goes away. Um, Anyway, uh, in all the stories of abuse that came out last week, um, there was kind of a similar thread in a lot of them where um, at these industry events like we're talking about, there were young people trying to break into an industry, meeting with people who are established in the industry, often men, 
and these men who were powerful or influential would begin flirting with the younger person. The younger person would feel one of two ways, typically. Either they would uh, feel not interested in hooking up with this person, but feel like they weren't sure how to politely decline the invitation, and they would feel a lot of stress and a lot of need to sort of get away from the situation. Or worse, they would feel like the only way that they could be secure in their industry would be to acquiesce to the uh, flirtations of these older, more powerful people. Uh, like I said, typically this is men in positions of power. I'm not saying that women can't and have not also done this. Um, but as a man and as somebody who is um, trying to be influential in my own industry and powerful, I'm a, I'm a hiring manager, I have a lot of juice in my company. Um, that's kind of where I want to speak to right now. So, fellas, like me, we got to knock this shit off. Yeah? When we attend industry events like this and we meet young people trying to break into the industry, we have to be careful about how we are wielding our power and influence and the subtle ways in which that might be coercing people to do things that they don't want to do. And look, I get it. You know, you're you're to you're away from home, you're having a good time, you're you know, the wine is flowing, you're feeling good, people are chatting you up, you're feeling confident. You know, I would I would even guess that many men who do this um, aren't doing it knowing that they're being predators. You know, I, I think a lot of men are just like, hey, I flirted, she, you know, stuff happened, it was fine. Um, but that that appeal to ignorance uh, doesn't fly anymore. There's been too many stories, too many people hurt, too many people feeling abused and taken advantage of and exploited. Fellas, if you're like me and you have power and you have influence, we have to be better about this. In fact, I would go so far as to say this, fellas. If you're at an industry event, let's look at all the young people and the rookies and the people just starting out and the interns and all that stuff. Let's just assume they're not here to fuck. <coughs> Let's assume that they're here to learn and to network and to hone their craft and to build their brand. Can we maybe just cool it for four days on trying to hook up with people? Um, <clears throat> those of us who are in positions of power have a responsibility to wield that power ethically and thoughtfully. We need to make sure that we are creating safe spaces for people to come and learn, for people to come and network, that we're creating spaces where they're not going to feel coerced by us, even sort of passively or tacitly by our power. You know, if you're watching this, I'm assuming that you are somebody who does not want to be a predator, right? I don't want to be a rapist. You don't want to be a rapist, correct? So I'm here to tell you that a lot of people are feeling like they have to perform sexual activities with powerful men in order to be safe, in order not to be blackballed, that they are not enthusiastically consenting to these things. They are feeling like their arm is being twisted. So if we're not wanting to be rapists, if we're not wanting to be sexual assaulters and exploiters and all those different things, then that's something we have to think about every time that we're out in the world in a position of power and influence. So, if you're with me at uh, Inbound this week, let's think about that. If you're going to other big industry events, especially if it's something that a lot of people and a lot of young people want to break into and, and, and need connections and network and things like that, let's be super, super, super careful and avoid even the hint that we are trying to exploit somebody into doing something that they don't want to do. You know, that might be sexual, might be something else, maybe making them work for free or, or you know, all, all the, you know, all for exposure. Hey, if you uh, hook me up with this thing, I can uh, get you in touch with the right people. Let's not do that. Don't do that. Come to these events. Let's help these people break in. Let's help teach these people. And let's do our part to create safe, inclusive environments where everybody feels like they can come and find value and then leave better than they were. Okay? 
And let me just give a message to to the young people who are trying to come up in industries and are trying to you know break into you know whether it's marketing or, or sales or game development or whatever. Um, it is not okay for somebody to use their power to wear down your defenses or your hesitations about sex or anything else. So if you're feeling weird, if you are feeling uh, uneasy about the flirtations that you're experiencing at the hands of a more powerful person, I'm here to tell you that's not okay for them to be doing that and you should listen to your gut and I don't know how to tell you how to extricate yourself or how to handle that um, because it's not your fault if somebody is abusing their power. And uh, if that's happening to you, I'm sorry that that's happening to you. Um, I'd like to tell you, hey, tell somebody, uh, hey, let's get HR involved, let's do this, let's do that. You may or may not feel comfortable doing that. Um, and the industry that you're in may or may not be safe for you to do that. I, I, we still have a lot of work to do. And by we, I mean dudes like me who wield a lot of power and influence. We have a lot of work to do to get rid of the abusers, to create safer spaces. And um, I wish we were more diligent about doing that. So, uh, fellas people with power, people with influence. Let's be better. Yeah? Yeah. I'm glad we had this talk. Anyway, I'm going to get back to the conference. Uh, appreciate you watching and um, just treat each other good out there. Thanks. Good night.